come sit with us as we enjoy our Easter dinner and I'm going to show you how I make everything that we have on this plate today. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. So it's definitely not Easter, but we're pretending like it's Easter just for the benefit of this video. We have got an entire feast on our plates and lucky for you, every single thing that's on my plate I've recorded. So. We're gonna go back in time as we take a bite of each different thing and I'll show you how we made it. Give me the meat. <laughs> do you have ham on Easter? If not, what do you have? Got that honey flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Got that sweet, savory flavor. I forgot to get a, mm. a knife, so I'm over here struggling. <laughs> Let me get you a knife. Mm, that's so good. Let me get, get me a knife. Get you. He's the best. How about a knife? Thank you. You're welcome. Growing up. Yeah. Did y'all have ham on Easter? Well, sometimes. Sometimes we would. Did you have any Easter traditions that you can remember? Hunt Easter eggs, get together for family, you know, go to church. Mm -hmm. um, we would do that every Easter Sunday together. And then usually it was go over to one of the grandmama's house. That's right. This oh, ham man. is so good, y'all. So let's go back mm. to this morning when I put it in the crock pot. It's so simple. Let me show you. We are doing a sugar glazed ham. It's gonna have a little bit of honey. It's gonna have some brown sugar, some Dijon mustard. It's everything that is perfect with ham. So let's do it. So I wanted a four to five pound ham and I couldn't find that. So I found this one, which is one and a half pounds. And then this one, which is 2.63 pounds. So that gets us there. So I'm gonna unwrap these and place these in my slow cooker. That is plenty. We're gonna have lots of leftovers, which is a good thing. Now let's head over to the stove top. I've got this little saucepan here. I'm gonna heat it to about medium high. Okay, into this saucepan, we're gonna put a half a cup of brown sugar. Okay, I sprayed my measuring cup. I'm gonna measure out a half a cup of honey. I've got a little bit left in this old container. Yep, that's that. Let's open up the new container. Okay, let's see if it'll come out easier. I mean, that ain't bad at all. Now we just need about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and a quarter cup of water. All right, so let's just combine all of that. And we're just gonna let all that sugar dissolve and let this just kind of hang out for a couple of minutes. It's been a couple of minutes and let's head it back over to our crock pot. So now I'm just gonna pour this glaze over my ham and you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna kind of separate these a little bit so that the glaze really gets down in there. All right, y'all, this is gonna cook on low for five to six hours. It's just that simple. So this mac and cheese, we apologize for the loud noise. Our neighbors are out and they're banging on something. The mac and cheese, I made it for the first time last Easter and we fell in love with it. It is the creamiest, it's my favorite mac and cheese. That's a different mac and cheese. We get helicopters today. Just any noise that we can get, it's great. Oh yeah. When you plan on doing something outside, you can forget you can record it. Record it. Helicopter. <laughs> We're gonna take a helicopter break. We'll be right back. If you have never seen my crock pot mac and cheese, I'm gonna take you back in time and show you how to make it because it is so good and you'll want, it's a go backer, you'll want more. I thought I would show y'all a new recipe that I'm using for crock pot mac and cheese. I don't think I've ever used this one before and um, I chose it because it didn't have evaporated milk because I was out of that. So we just need a can of cream of chicken soup, some mayonnaise, some sour cream, some seasonings. Um, I've got three cups of cheddar cheese and then one cup of, how do you say that? Gruyere, Gruyere cheese. And then we've got two cups of uncooked macaroni. I am heating up a pot now that I'm going to boil this in. I'm only gonna boil it for about five minutes. I don't want it all the way cooked. And then we'll drain it and rinse it with some cold water. Okay, our water is boiling. And I'm going to attempt to do this one-handed. Let's see if we can do it. Ta-da! And we are just gonna boil these for five minutes, that's it. Okay, it's been five minutes. Let's go drain this over here. I meant to turn on the water first. There we go. Oh, I got y'all all fogged up. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, and now we're just rinsing it with cold water. We wanna stop the cooking process because 
otherwise in the crock pot it'll turn to mush and just in case you wanted to see what i look like i'm currently getting ready for church and getting all the things ready so that we have lunch so i've got half my hair on top of my head half of it's curled we just gotta roll with it okay i've got my smaller crock pot here my larger crock pot has ham in it right now okay to our crock pot i added all of our macaroni i'm also going to be adding a can of cream of chicken soup a half a cup of mayo. I'm just gonna eyeball this. We need a half a cup of sour cream. We need a teaspoon of onion powder and about half a teaspoon of dry mustard. We also just need a little black pepper and our cheese. Got about three cups of sharp cheddar and then, well, let me take this out. Well, it's already in there. About a cup or so of Gruyere. I don't know how to say that very well, but we're going with it. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> We're just gonna stir all of this and put this on. You can do it on low for three hours or high for two. I'm gonna do low for three because we're headed to church here in just a couple of minutes. I've got 10 minutes, y'all, and I gotta finish my hair. Lid on. And this one is not programmable other than we'll just put it on eight hours for low, but obviously I'll know to take it off when we get home from church. You know what I remember about Easter? It seemed like every year it would rain on Easter. It would be pretty like this. And then all of a sudden on Easter, it would rain. All of our family photos outside, as a little kid, there are gray, gray skies and everything's wet. We would be so excited, but Easter egg hunts would be um, canceled. All the things would be canceled that were gonna be outside because it, would, it was gonna rain. Have you tried any of the green bean casserole? It's about to happen right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. We're going to see. You don't like no uh, green bean casserole, do you? No. It's not one of your favorites, is no. it? No. I definitely didn't write that in school where on one of those little questionnaires where it said, what's your favorite food? And everybody said pizza or hamburgers. Mm. And I said green bean casserole. Man, that is good. What you do to that thing? This is the What you do to these? This is the new way and the only way that I will be making it from now on. Oh, yeah. Recently, I, a, a su subscriber sent me a church right. cookbook, and I got this recipe from there. So if you haven't seen that video, if you mm. haven't seen this recipe, let's go back in time, and I'll show you how to make green bean casserole the best way. This green bean casserole has a cream of mushroom component, but you're not using a can of cream of mushroom soup. You're pretty much doing it on your own. Okay, let's preheat our oven to 350. Let's preheat our large skillet to about medium high. And we're gonna allow this stick, yes, whole stick of butter to melt. Okay, the recipe calls for finely diced or finely chopped mushrooms. So I have a carton. I did get the pre-sliced, but I do need to run my knife through it, so I'm gonna do that. Our butter is completely melted, so let's add in our mushrooms. And we're gonna saute these in the butter for about five minutes. It already smells good. I'm already a fan of this recipe. Something I forgot to show y'all in the beginning was mozzarella cheese. That's new to me as well. However, I have a cheese monster. Yeah, yeah you. All right, there you go. It has been five minutes. I've got a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. We're gonna sprinkle this in here and cook it for about a minute. Gosh, this smells so good. I love mushrooms. It doesn't call for it, but we're going. We're going in. Just a little bit. I wanted a little bit of that garlic flavor in there too, so. I've got a cup and a half of milk going in. I've got one cup of sour cream going in. And then we also have a cup of mozzarella cheese going in. Never added cheese to a green bean casserole, I don't think. This is new to me. I ain't hating it. So let's stir this together and we're gonna let it come up to a bubble. Oh my stars. Oh, it's already bubbling. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. Now to this, we're gonna add our French style or French cut green beans. I did drain them. We've got two cans going in. I'll stir that all together. It's making all kinds of noises. Now it says to put this in a nine by 13. I don't, I mean, I guess it'll be fine. I was gonna say, I don't feel like it'll fill the whole thing, but maybe it will. Just not very deep which is fine. Oh my goodness. Oh, we also need to salt and pepper it, so let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna turn my stove off, okay? 
and let me grab my baking dish. We are gonna transfer this over. All right, it definitely fills up the nine by 13. I did not think it would. It smells so good. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Let me grab my French fried onions. I normally don't put mine on until the end, but this says to go ahead and put them on, so. And I'm gonna spread them out. Steven, look at that. Ooh, that looks good. You have no idea. It smells delicious in there. You have no idea. I've got the, I don't have no idea. No, oh my gosh. When we go eat that? In about 45 minutes. Oh, 45 minutes? <laughs> Way too long. <laughs> All right, this is going in the oven at 350 for 45 minutes. You can just tell that it's, it's made with love. Well, it's made from scratch, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Let's talk about deviled eggs. Let's talk about it. Do you like the kind that has like relish in it? And... Yeah. <clears throat> you know me. Just start stacking stuff up on there. Put some bacon on there, some relish. I like I like the vinegar flavor of yeah. it. I love the paprika. Yeah. I mean, you would probably throw a jalapeno pepper on there and I'd eat it. That's not a bad idea. I like creamy. That's why I'm mine don't have relish or anything like that i prefer the creamy but i made some not too long ago do you remember it had a different ingredient in them yeah well, i don't remember what the ingredient was but... chick-fil-a sauce you remember that somewhat yeah so my friend kate so i have a friend on instagram her name is kate she made deviled eggs but instead of was it instead of mayo i can't remember she used Chick-fil-A <clears throat> sauce and it was really good. Very, very good. <clears throat> but again, they were a creamy deviled egg. But my deviled eggs are super basic. This is the way I make them for every family gathering. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me show you how to make that. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. Excuse me. A little tip, if you have one of these containers, we use a dry erase marker and we put the expiration date on the lip here and it works perfectly. That way we can throw away the container that we get our eggs or we can give it back to, there's a local place that we get eggs from sometimes, so we'll take old containers to them because they need them. But this is super helpful. When I am doing deviled eggs and I'm hard boiling more than six eggs, I use my Instant Pot. Otherwise, I use my little, my little egg cooker. I'll show you that in a second if you aren't familiar. But I'm gonna throw, well, I'm not gonna throw. I'm gonna gently place my eggs here on this little tray. Then I'm just gonna put my lid on and I do the five, five, five method for my eggs. Five minutes on high pressure, five minutes natural release, and then five minutes in an ice bath. Okay, it has been five minutes. So let's let the rest of the steam out. I've got an ice bath waiting for them, so let's grab them out. This is my egg cooker that I use if we're just gonna have hard boiled eggs throughout the week. I have it linked to my Amazon store, I love it. It can do up to six at a time. Anytime I'm doing more, obviously I have to use something else, but this thing comes in clutch all the time. I came in here to find where I had my deviled eggs recipe written down. I don't really follow this anymore just because I've made them so for so many years, but here you go, this is, if you wanna screenshot this. So I really have found the best way for me to peel the eggs is to tap them once on each end and then lightly kind of apply light pressure and roll it just to kind of break it up. And that's how I'm able to peel them pretty easily. My very favorite way to store my eggs so that we can take them somewhere or even just here is this thing. And I got it from the Dollar Tree years ago. I have two of them, paid a dollar for them. This was before the, you know, the price hack. Price hack? That's not the word. Hike. Ooh, it's, it's gonna be okay. Price hike. Now everything's $1.25. Anyway, so I don't cut all the way down through the yolk. I cut it kind of like an avocado like the pit of an avocado. And then I just pop it over there. That way I don't get my knife super messy. Oh, and of course, second time it doesn't work. I mean, it worked, but it didn't come out in the ball. It came out half and half. I'm gonna do that to the rest of these and I'll be right back. All the rest of them worked. Perfect little yolks. So now let's start mashing these up. First things first, 
Duke's Mayo. I do usually one big scoop to start with. Well, just depending too on how many I'm making. So let's do that amount for now. More than likely I'll end up adding more, but not a whole lot of mustard. I do a little more mustard than I think it says in that recipe that I showed you. I think it said half a teaspoon. I do more like a teaspoon. Apple cider vinegar. I don't know, a little over a teaspoon, maybe two. Then throw some salt and pepper in there. So when I say I make mine plain, I mean it. I just love the tartness of the um, mustard and the vinegar. And if it gets too tart, you can always just add more mayo to kind of calm it down a little bit. See, that's not quite creamy enough for me. It's a little too, it's a little too separated. So let's add a little more mayo. All right, let me taste a small amount and see if I need to adjust like the vinegar or mustard. I want a little more vinegar. This is all personal preference. I like them to be kind of tart. Mm. Yep, that's perfection. I'm gonna grab a sandwich Ziploc bag and this little juice glass. That way I can just fill it up. And then lastly, I just clip off a corner here. And now we're good to go. I'm just going to fill my eggs and then sprinkle with some paprika and we're good to go. My favorite way to do deviled eggs, and I'm always asked to do the deviled eggs for our family gatherings for holidays. So I guess everybody else loves these too. They're just simple. I've tried different ways and I, it's not that I don't like them, but this is my preference for sure. So tell me below, how do you do your deviled eggs? Oh, you know what I haven't tried yet? What's that? Well, we've got almost like a dessert on our plate. It's a grape salad. If you've never had a grape salad, if you saw my video on Tuesday, you saw me make it. But if you didn't, make sure you go back to Tuesday's video and watch me make the grape salad because it's almost like a dessert on your plate. It's like candy. It is like candy. Mm. Something else we haven't tried on our plate are these big old brioche buns. Brioche bun? Oh, yeah. Oh. That's a good one. That's real good. You dig it. The neighbor's chickens. Ah, so we have, uh, we're in. <laughs> We've woken up in the morning before and there's um, been chickens in our backyard. They're keeping the grass showing. <laughs> have to kind of shoo them out and remind them where they belong. Here's the bad news. You ready for the bad news? What's the bad news? I ain't making this on Easter. I done done it once. I ain't oh, doing it again. That's all right. <laughs> but I worked on this all day today. I ain't doing it again on Easter. I appreciate you working on it. Thank you. I saved all my, I saved all the room for this. Mm -hmm. So let us know below what your Easter tra traditions are. Do you have anything kind of outside of the norm that your family does for Easter? We want to hear about it. I keep getting distracted by the chickens. <laughs> Maybe they're laying me some eggs to find on Easter. Jane, they're scratching them uh, pine needles up. Yeah. Because underneath them pine needles is bugs and worms. They're having themselves an Easter dinner right now too. They are. They're just glad they ain't Easter dinner. <laughs> so these are little dirt cake desserts, individual desserts. I made them earlier today. Just a heads up. If you put your little Reese's Pieces on there and put it in the fridge, can you see that? They kind of bleed orange. So don't do that. Bleed orange. Don't do that. But let me go back in time and show you how I made these. I have made these dirt cake parfaits before for Valentine's Day, and I had a video about that. But today, we're gonna Easter it up. To get started, we need two sleeves of Oreos. This food processor was very kindly sent to me from a couple of sweet subscribers, Robin Sumner. And I don't use it a ton, but it it comes in handy. Oh, I'm sitting here pressing the button. Guess who didn't plug it in? <laughs> it's gonna be a long day. All right, here we go. Let's try that again. It did really good, except, I mean, quality control, right? Oh, well. Oh, another one. <laughs> Now we need to mix the next ingredients. So we've got four ounces of softened cream cheese. We've got half a stick of butter that's also been softened. And then we have half a cup of powdered sugar. And we're just gonna mix this until it's really well blended. Next, we're gonna fold in eight ounces of whip topping or Cool Whip. Okay, let's fold all of that together. Now, let's make, let's wash our hands. Now we're gonna mix our instant pudding mix. So I have one thing of vanilla instant pudding mix. If you can find the white chocolate, even better. My grocery store almost 
never has it, so I have to go with the vanilla. And the directions on the box say to add two cups of milk. We're only doing a cup and a half. I love my new whisk that lays flat in the drawer. But then you just turn it and it locks into place. It's so nice. So let's whisk this really well. I whisked that for a minute or two. It's thickening up a little bit. You don't have to let it completely set up because we are gonna pour it in here. Now let's just stir this really well. And then I'm gonna add some green so it almost looks kind of like grass. I think for Valentine's Day I added red to make it kind of pinkish. It's like a really light green. I'm gonna add just a couple of drops more. There we go. That should be plenty. Oh yeah, that deepened it up just like I wanted it to. It doesn't look very green on camera, but it looks more green in person. I have these little, I don't know if they're parfait cups or not, but almost like little punch cups. So first off, we're gonna go in with a couple of tablespoons of Oreo. Now I'm gonna take some of this cream cheese pudding mixture and put it on top. Oh, and I did add a couple more shakes of the uh, green food coloring because I wanted it to come off on camera as green. So it definitely looks a little more green now. Let's do that again. We're gonna layer again. I think the original thing says that it's, it makes six, but I think I can get eight out of this. So now another layer of the cream cheese pudding. This layer is gonna be a little bit thicker, just so it's closer to the top of the cup. Quality control. Mm. Mm -hmm. I got some Reese's Pieces and I also got some peeps because why not right these little peeps look pitiful at least here on the end they'll be all right do you like peeps i love peeps let's add that in there if you are looking for even more easter recipes you can go check out a playlist that i'm gonna have linked in the description box it is a collab hosted by sammy and valerie and there's going to be lots of different videos included in that collab with lots of easter recipes so be sure to check that out i'm gonna have one peep left over we know what that means now I'm going to sprinkle just a little more because just because I have some of the Oreo left, we're just going to add a little more dirt. Okay, that's cute. That's good. The cream is like it's creamy, but it's kind of frothy. It's got cool, it? it's got Cool Whip and pudding in it. Too. Ah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got a little Reese Pieces surprise. <laughs> Reese Pieces. How do y'all say it? Do you say Reese's Pieces or do you say Reese Pieces? Reese Pieces. <laughs> I ain't big on peeps, so. though. I'll eat it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just not big on peeps. I'm not Do you like marshmallows? No, I'm not really a marshmallow kind okay. of Okay. Well, if you don't like marshmallows, that makes sense. If I buy marshmallows for s'mores, I will just go in there and grab handfuls. Yeah. Just take them like of the aspirin tablets. Of the marshmallows from the bag and just eat them. Because I love marshmallows. You spent all day in here cooking. I did. Thank you. I really do appreciate My it. My feet hurt. Well, you're going to get a foot massage. Might even put some of that Dr. Teal's on it. Mm. All right. Stick a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> we will see y'all next time. Bye, y'all. Um, oh, let me say, did I say goodbye already? I think I did. I think I said yeah, stick a said, fork in me. Bye. What did I say? Bye. 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 <laughs> So many different ways of saying it. I don't say bye. <coughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> so I say it. Bye. <laughs> bye.